This podcast contains explicit content, language, and sexual situations. It is intended for adults 18 years of age and older. These thoughts and opinions expressed are not those of any specific employer, group, or individual. Better with the rat race, we decided to sell everything and move to Cancun, Mexico. Now we do what we love. Work, party, and play in the middle of paradise. Now we want to share the fun that we get to have every day. Come to room 77. Let's play. Just watch me play. <laughs> sorry, I love you. Well, I don't want to talk about that stuff. And you know better. Yes, for me. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> How are you? And I don't want to hear anything about your eye. No, don't do that. I have to turn my volume up. Hold on. I'm going to unplug that. And here we are. How are you? So good. We have to change this studio. I still can't hear myself. I think it's these headphones. I really oh, do. really? Yeah, I'm not a fan. We'll, fi- we'll figure that out. How are you? Tell me about, how was your day today? I feel a little guilty because I didn't go to the gym today, but we went to go have a meeting about the November takeover. We did. We went to our hotel in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. It's so pretty. Did you notice, though, when we're all naked up on the pool, there are going to be some people that can see in, but from the ocean, like you have to sort of be at, a, at an angle in, in the ocean, the side will be blocked. Right. Which I'm kind of like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you like that. You like being sort of expositiony. I think there's a lot of people who like that too. I'm not expositiony. That oh. would be that I give out information that is needed all the time. But oh. I am exhibitiony. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The hotel's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we only have like seven spots left. We are vaccinated. Everybody else is vaccinated. We are also cleanly shaven. I like the rooms. I'm getting excited about it. We have some dancers coming in that are going to be dancing all day and probably into the night. We're putting a big dinner together. Make sure you go and check that out. I didn't want this to turn into a big commercial. Room 77 sensation. Is that right? Yeah. Where do they go? Uh, Room77life.com. It's right on the page. It's November 9 through 14. And it's all inclusive, clothing optional. Come and join us if there are spots left by the time this actually hits the air. So I don't, <laughs> I don't actually know. You had a little bit of sexy time since the last time we talked, right? We did. We did. And we, someone I was waiting for that we couldn't fit in. Yeah, we at had another party. Yeah, we met them at Haven. We were like, hey, if we ever see you guys again, we'd love to be naked with you. Yeah. And they took us up on that. So the next time they came down to Desire, they were like, hey, we're going to be in town. Uh, Want to fuck? Yes. We said yeah we will meet you at la serena and let the fucking commence not in la serena but yes uh, almost in la serena so i'm sitting at the restaurant and i'm just staring at her little body and i'm like i'm gonna have sex with you i can't wait to have sex with you that's what i'm saying in my head and then i thought i wonder if lauren is also saying that and i look up and you're making out with him (laughs) this is what threw me off immediately oh what Well, I'll tell you. Uh, We come back here. I'm usually a quick down and let's get this started kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Right? When someone is faster than me, it throws me off. I think we made one drink. Uh, I didn't even really make it through my drink. And you're like, I'm going to go take a shower. It's fine and good. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, go take a shower. I may shower also. But then you came out naked. (laughs) And just started making out again. What? Well, so I misread your cues because there's no air conditioning, obviously, in the restaurant. I'm like, I feel sweaty. I want to wash up. Right. So you were like, uh, made the drinks and everything. And you said, honey, you can go take a shower now. So I'm thinking that's you because you like to get stuff started. Like, go ahead, take a shower, do the naked thing, come out. We'll grab our drinks. We're going to the bedroom and get everything started. Yeah, I think so. I feel like they, we have to be like in a little bit of a timing thing a little bit because yeah. you came out you were the only one naked i was in the middle of a story about light bulbs or something <laughs> Was it just mentally, it wasn't really there at that moment. And then you start making out with him. And then inside seven seconds, his clothes are off. And I'm like, oh, this started. <laughs> I wasn't planning on the making out and him getting like naked. He was just uh, really fast. He was really fast, right? <laughs> she was not so fast, right? No, because so now we're in a conversation. I think it'd be rude for her to be like, uh-huh, and light bulbs, and here go my pants on the floor. And You were fine with just leaving us to fend for ourselves. Sure. I didn't have anything set up in the other room. Usually, I like to put out a little lube. I like to light a candle or something. <laughs> I like to have things set up, like within arm's reach. Like, I want uh, condoms over there. Right. I want the lube over there. Nothing was set. Like, I, the scene was not set. <laughs> 
And I was like, oh, this started. And then I couldn't stop it. It was like a bullet train. So then we go into the bedroom and, and it's going faster. And now you guys are off by yourself by the door, making out heavily. You're both naked. And she's looking at me like, anytime now. Oh, no. Now I'm like, oh, no, I feel pressure. Ugh. And everybody knows when you feel pressure. You had showered or not yet? Not yet. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't even get to shower yet. And that should tell you one thing. <laughs> I said I was going to shower. You didn't even wait for me to shower. <laughs> it wasn't my plan. It's not like I came out with a list going, I'm going to start now. It was just, that's just the way stuff rolls out. Sometimes, you know, I don't really know how to say stop. I just well, say. Well, you have, to, you have to at least wait for the other person to be ready. We gave you a starter's pistol. You just randomly fire it. Felt more like a game of musical chairs. Like, and go. Eh. I just didn't, I wasn't ready. So then I started going with her. I was like, uh, I guess I won't shower. And then I was like, uh, I think I will shower because I was like, I, I, I don't want to smell my balls because it was sweaty in there. And I, I you want to be fresh. I want to be fresh. Anyway, the sex commenced. She, they both were just really hot. And I really needed to, to have this, this sex. Did you have a good time? She had an amazing pussy. Like, Oh, I could yeah. have gotten lost down there. Well, and sometimes what happens is like we were kissing. She also, amazing kisser, which is mm -hmm. one of really big turn on for me. Right. So we kind of just got wrapped up in it. And, you know, at the same time, it's like I feel bad leaving you out when I get really into a girl, but I was super into her. And then I went down on her and her pussy was gorgeous. And there was like one tiny little diffuser light, but everything else was moonlight. And we had our curtains open and, and the moon was coming in. And it was just, it was just, I was so turned on by her. And then he comes behind me and he is going down on me. And sometimes for me, it's like, it's distracting because I'm like in two places. Like my brain's in front in my mouth of what I'm doing. And then, but it's also like, hey, stuff's happening back there. <laughs> Like stuff's happening back there. I got to make more archy or I have to spread my legs more or. No, it looked beautiful. I actually just wanted to leave the three of you, let you have your time. And I felt like oh, I'm going to waddle in there and screw everything up. <laughs> Uh, but I did. And this is actually one of those instances where we, we hadn't really seen them fully naked. They, they were beautiful, partially naked when we saw them at uh, Haven. When I went down on her, I started licking her with my tongue. <laughs> And then I put my fingers inside of her. You know me. I, I I don't know what I'm doing ever. I just started and she was like, oh, careful. And I'm like, oh, no. What did I do? What did I do already? It wasn't so much a careful that I had done something wrong. It was a careful that she was like, I am so sensitive. Like, I will squirt all over your face. So half of me was like, oh, that's really hot. <laughs> And then the other half of me was like sort of squinting, like waiting to get sprayed. Do I need goggles? I have a mask. I go get my scuba mask. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. I've never been squirted on before, but I was like, it's probably going to happen tonight. I'm enjoying it, but at the same time, I'm like making that face where I'm squinting because I don't... I don't does it burn your eyes? No, I don't know. No. And she was on top one time when she was getting fucked by him and I was eating her out underneath, which was incredibly hot. I thought she was going to squirt all over me at that point. I didn't get squirted on. Why do you think he warned you or she warned you or he warned She you? warned me. Well, she said, I don't want to ruin your sheets. Oh. I don't want to get your sheets all wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I don't care about the sheets. Do I have to wear safety glasses? <laughs> Is it going to burn? Is it like, I don't know what it's like. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it, it didn't happen. Now, what I had noticed when he took his pants off was that he had a really great penis, like a penis model, right? Yeah, so amazing. So, yeah. So I'm like, oh, Richard, why can't you have that? That's what my voice says in my head. <laughs> of course it does. It'd be so much better if you had that. <laughs> you would walk around naked all well, the time if you had yeah, that. Yeah. And then your other voice is like, you're fine, Richard. You get in there. <laughs> yeah, but look at his. It's so <laughs> much, so much better. Uh, no, no, no. You're fine, Richard. She's going to love you for who you are. The girth on that thing. <laughs> so we were laying back at one point. He was sort of laying in between your legs and you were laying in between his legs. You were just talking to him and you're playing with his cock at the same time. And you're like, floppy flop, flop. Look at your dick, flop, floppy flop. And I was like, what the fuck? I want a floppy dick. Like, that's what I want. If there's any word to describe what I want, it's a dick that flops. That's what I want. And now I you're talking stop. about some of the, you've never handled my cock and said, floppy flop, look at your floppy floppy cock. <laughs> like it, you're like, you're playing with a balloon animal. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker. So there's a secret desire. I started 
flapping it on. You start flopping it on your face and you're like, look how floppy it is. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you, Lauren. I want floppy cock. That's the penis. That's the penis to have. Then I, then I kept staring at it. I, I know what you're going to say afterwards. I'm going to be like, he had a really big cock. And you're going to be like, I didn't notice much different. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's weird. Because you've never played that. floppy flop with my <laughs> cock. You've never marched it around like it was a doll baby. <laughs> floppy, floppy, flop. Floppy, flop, flop your cock. <laughs> Uh, so I cradled it and gave it a bottle. You did. You held it like a little baby. <laughs> so I texted him. I need you to measure your penis because I need to know the dimensions of your penis because your penis was perfect. And he's like, I'm on vacation. I did not bring a measuring tape with me. <laughs> I'm like, well, you better find a fucking way. So he measured it for me. It's eight inches in length and 6.2 inches in girth. Uh, so that is what I need. That's a perfect penis. Uh, that to me, I think is the perfect penis. So that's what I need to to get. I need to get eight inches and, and 6.2 inches around. I don't know how I'm going to get it. Do you want to tell the listener what yours is? I, I, I really don't know the exact dimensions, but I do know it's not that. Mm. Okay. It's the same. I don't you know. Don't even I know. may be a little bit longer, but I am definitely not as thicker. Mm -hmm. And I love girth, Lauren. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. Floppy flop. Floppy flop. floppy flop. <laughs> Look at your cocky flop. Floppy floppy cock. Hey, bitch, I'm right here. So we're in the middle of, of fucking, right? And I, I, at this point now, I have to go get the condoms in the middle of the fucking part, which is what I was afraid of in the first place because I never got to stage it correctly. <laughs> I go over and I grab like, I always do the same thing where I grab like nine condoms because I don't know how many we're going to need. Uh, it's never nine. So I lay them out on the bed and I, I tell you, I'm like, get this out while I stay hard. I put it on myself and then I fuck. And then to him, I'm like, the condoms are right here. And he's like, hold on a sec. And he has to leave. And I'm like, but the condoms are right here. And then I realize, oh, he needs larger condoms because he has a larger penis. My brain is just going, no, the condoms are right here. Please. <laughs> please use mine. Please use my condoms. <laughs> just make me. Because I can't take this right now. If you go and get a larger condom, I'm going to cry. And I don't want to cry right now. I hate when that happens. I think the guy should warn you. Uh, listen, just as a warning for everyone, you're going to want to maybe strap on your goggles right now. Also, uh, Richard, I am going to need a larger size condom. <laughs> I don't want that to throw you off in the midst yes. of you putting on your baby condom. <laughs> So, also, if you catch me from a side angle, I have an entire six pack. <laughs> as I can see, you are lacking in the core muscle area. Why don't you just stroke your hands on them now? Just get used to them so you can feel them. Okay? It's not distracting. That's what's called a low BMI. I don't want it to distract you later. I am going to be hard at all times. Sign right here and just initial that and let's get get on with this but you'll use my condom try my condom it's not that small so he knew about the the condoms that our friend coke can cock yes he knows about those condoms and they had a conversation with each other about the, the condoms that they use like guys with big thick cocks having conversations about hey. the condoms they use oh yeah yeah, yeah. you use those doralas deltas they got i got a zipper on the side yeah it comes in a big Amazon box. <laughs> hey, what are you guys talking about? Nothing, Richard. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Just, yeah, uh, just. So I'm glad you guys are having giant condom conversations. <laughs> it's like there's a support group or some shit. Oh, God. Thanks, guys. I'm glad you all know. I don't even know the name of the condom. It's like some sort of secret. Like, Why would you need to? I don't. Evidently. I don't need to know it. They, no. no. No one even tell me. <laughs> they don't even tell don't me the name. What... what is the name of the condom? You don't need to know. <laughs> Forget you're good. About it. Yeah, you just forget we you skins, even heard that's anything. What, that you got skins, you got Richard. Skins. You're fine. They're good. They're colorful. Yeah. They're sturdy. They're black. What are yours called? Large expandables. <laughs> uh, professional grade. <laughs> Great. Where do you get those? You can't. You need a license. <laughs> <laughs> I just take a test. You gotta send photos <laughs> in. Measure. You'll up. never get them. You'll they'll never ship them to you <laughs> ever. Like, those little food scales you have to put your cock on you gotta, and weigh it. Your cock has to weigh 2.5 pounds <laughs> at least, right? And then you send a photo in. You'll never get them. Never. Never get them. So we're not allowed to tell you the name. <laughs> Assholes.
I got to have sex. You did not get to have sex. I did not have sex. You did not have sex. I did have sex. I mean, I had sex with you, but that's not what we're talking about here. I had a- It's a swinger podcast. Yeah. I (laughs) had a hard time uh, staying hard in my condom. Yeah. Uh, It's just hard. It's hard. So I just decided now that after being uh, vaccinated, I think we can have bareback sex. Yeah, that's part of- I'm pretty sure that was on the COVID form. Well, I- They cover that. I asked her. Mm -hmm. Uh, She nodded yes. (laughs) Sitting. English. You asked her. And she I asked her in yes. English. She nodded yes. yes. I so said, "Does means- this protect, protect against all sexually transmitted uh, stuff?" And she said, "Eight mm-hmm. <laughs> twenty-two." Mm-hmm. And she passed. Yep, she said "siguiente," <laughs> which I think means "see." <laughs> I would like to have them again. I wish. I wish them well. I will try to attain that full girth uh, length, maybe, uh, by the time I see them again. I will also try to get in better shape. I need to run a few marathons or something. <laughs> your, your shape is fine. Uh, it's fine. I just, look, I don't care what you look like. Everybody feels insecure. Right. Every, should, I was just talking about this on Instagram. Well, save it for the podcast, lady. Everything is relative. It really is. And you got to understand that everybody has the same feelings. They just do. Absolutely. And, and and it affects you usually more than it affects the other person. And also, I believe it is true that men are more obsessed with penises than than women are, especially yeah. this man right here. Mm. I am. I am. I I can get obsessive with it. I know it's not going to make me a better lover, but I feel like it will make me a better lover. <laughs> you just want to wear it around. Yeah. Well, I just think it'll make me more interesting. We ended again. We always wound up in a position where we were talking, and I was sort of next to him, and you guys were sort of down on the other side of the bed. We were talking about who came. Oh, I didn't come because I was I was wearing a condom. So then we finished sitting next to one another and jacking off for both of you, and you were using your your vibrator. Mm while it was happening and she was like I really enjoyed that she had never done that before mm-hmm. I was like just watch us jerk off it's one of Lauren's favorite things mm-hmm. to just watch guys jack off so I jacked off and came all over her stomach I came all over her stomach he stood up and came all over your face you said come on her face and I so I said get up stand he's like okay what do I do where am I going I made him stand on the side of the bed I laid down on the bed like I threw my head back and just the sight because you came up she came up everyone was like uh the side of that i had a really hard time falling asleep that night because i kept running this visual through my head of him standing over me and then you and her and i could see everybody and again with the goggles maybe maybe but i kept my eyes open I'm yep. not afraid. No, you're A little brave. bit of sting, whatever, bring it. Ugh, so hot. Just really had such a great time with them in the bed and out of the bed. I know you had trouble that night sleeping because you're mumbling flop, flop, <laughs> flop, baby, flop. Look at it flop. I was like, what? And you're like, hey. Hey, you. Hey, yeah. you. Hey, you. <laughs> You're Lauren. We do a podcast together. How are you? I know you did a lot of work today. Like work work or at the gym work? At the gym work. I did. I can barely move my legs. I watched you work really hard. And then as you work so hard that I was like, it's time to leave. Yeah. We have to get out of here. I am trying to also get in better shape yes. myself. I'm doing the naughty gym thing. Th- I call it the being a better fucker. Yeah. Because it's a double entendre, right? <laughs> I got to talk to them about this. I'd like them to have it on their, their website, be a better fucker. Because uh, <laughs> right now, I'm trying to be a better fucker. Yeah. And this is all about cardio for me. Because when we were away in Antigua, before that, even a little bit, I've said it before. Yeah, you you before. can find it in the logs. Scroll back. No, you go to a courthouse. This is all public record. <laughs> you can find it. You can. Right? Yeah. I've said it before that a good lover, when it comes to a guy, is all about cardio. It's yeah. all about cardio. Uh, if you have a, a, a brain that doesn't shut you down because of nerves, uh-huh. I think you're an amazing fuck. I've, I've seen really good fuckers. Yeah. The my, mighty gym. <laughs> mighty gym. That's the competitor we're opening up. <laughs> we haven't told them yet. <laughs> Better fucker. I want that to be a, a level. <laughs> That's so great. But I almost died today doing their little basic one. The newbies. Yeah, the newbies. Uh, I almost died. I can't believe that. I was going to work out with you and do the newbie program. And I know. 
Why would I move? Because the the girl that I have the hots for was in the middle of the room. She was doing lunges and stuff, and in tiny shorts, in tiny shorts again. And it was just, it was just all too much. When when I was in there, there's this guy that we see in the gym every once in a while. He's like mysterious guy, uh, who's uh, now has a, a man bun, but uh, he's very tan. He's from Boston, and every time we run into him, he's like, "Hey, man, how's life going?" And I still <laughs> want to ask him, "What is your deal? What are you doing here? You're like 20 years old. You're living in the middle." of Mexico and all you do is swim in the ocean all day. I want to know what his story yeah, is. Yeah, I would like to know. But anyway, he's way younger than, than I am. And I watched the young girl today because I always imagine in my head that she's looking at me <laughs> sexually, but I, I don't look at her because I don't want her to think that I'm looking at her sexually while I'm hoping that she's looking at me sexually. <laughs> and the mom catch you? Yeah, sometimes the mom is with her, but whatever. She wants me to. So, uh, <laughs> so today when she was doing, I, I think she was doing leg raises. I don't know. I wasn't looking. I saw her looking at the guy. The Boston guy. Yeah, the Boston guy. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, that's uh, that's what women have to deal with a lot, right? Like guys that are just douchebags. When a younger gal walks in the room, head sort of turned. Guys don't really deal with that all that often. Women are so much better at subtleties yeah. than men. Was she looking at him directly or using a mirror? Because I always use the mirror when I check out people. She was using a mirror, uh-huh. but I don't, I still am not sure because she is very young if she was just checking herself out. Oh, right. So there was a position where she was on the floor where she was sort of spread eagle. And I thought, oh, what if God. I just lay just inside of her crotch? Excuse me. Miss. Would I go to jail? Probably not allowed to work out at that gym anymore. I don't know. I think they'd give me a pass for one <laughs> one time. I say, <laughs> hey, I screwed up. All right. I'm not going to do it again. I will never plant myself inside of a young girl's crotch again. I didn't see her there. I was just trying to do some burpees. Oh, I would I would have gone with complete honesty. Oh. It looked awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's it way looked, better. Her vagina looked awesome. She's wearing tight shorts. What did you want me to do? <laughs> How many days am I supposed to put up with this? Come on. <laughs> if you're going to kick anybody out, kick her out. <laughs> All right, this story was not supposed to be in the podcast, but uh, you're welcome. So yeah, I was trying to to, to become a better fucker because our lives are, are very unbalanced right now. We are working so much. We're just always doing stuff. And I was like, we, we have to do something. We, we have, do. We really do because- We've already lost our tans from Antigua. We need to enjoy life more. One of the ways to do that is with financial freedom. <laughs> Which is, you know, Patreon, which we'll get to in a second. Our friends Andy and Dave over at OnlyAndy.com, they're like, why don't you do OnlyFans? Yeah. Right. All right, OnlyAndy.com. I will do OnlyFans. It's like you can make some money, free up your life. So they were sort of shepherding us through this. Right? Yeah. They were like, why don't you do it? Good, kind souls. Very, very kind souls. They just kill it. Their shepherding is amazing. But uh, what losers we are. Their OnlyFans is so fucking amazing and so on point and she's so hot and they do such a great job with it that it was almost too much. It was like, hey, do you want to play piano? I always wanted to play piano. All right, here's some Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Get started. It's just that good. Onlyandy.com. Every time I la- go on there to like upload a photo, it's like she's doing so many beautiful photos. You can't keep up. She posts like twice a day. Everything is well thought out. It's well lit. Yeah. She looks fucking amazing. I'm like, how do you have time to go to the gym yeah, and keep them. your body up? Fuck them. That's Fuck them. Fuck them. For- I- I, hard. I can't seem to do it for more than a second, but they should teach a class on how to do it. Only class. Only a only, master class. Master class with only Andy. Yes, that's such a great idea. I, I wish only Andy could do ours. Like wear a Lauren mask. <laughs> And then, awesome. and then Dave wears a Richard mask. <laughs> I don't think anybody will know the difference. But anyway, we're thankful that uh, Patreon has been able to make all of this possible because we wouldn't be able to do it. Without you, this show is yours. You you own this show. There you go. Now, what we're going to do this time is you're going to go through the names, right? I'm going to tell everybody what each person bought for me this month so they know how they are affecting our, our lives. lives. This okay? is great. So great you, idea. You say the name and okay. then I'm going to tell you uh, what they bought me this month or us this month, I should say. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, and go. John and Amy. They bought me an EcoGuard XA10304 air filter. Ted. They paid our Netflix bill. Scott. They paid our internet TV browser, which steals everything and makes Netflix a waste of money. <laughs> C and E. They bought us a taco dinner. <laughs> Shaid. They bought us medicine for my tummy after that taco dinner. <laughs> Sean. Sean filled a third of our gas tank. <laughs> Nick. They paid our podcast host server, which is how you are listening to this. 
Charlie. Got me an app subscription for learning better Spanish. Chai Town Grower 20. Filled up another third of our gas tank. Doug digs her. Bought me headlights for my truck. Anna Henderson. Bought other headlights for my truck because the first ones I bought were wrong. <laughs> Ever. Replaced our serpentine belt for the truck. <laughs> Edward. Got us a case of water that we use to bathe. <laughs> And Mr. Meeks. Bought us some fruit on the side of the road that was sold by a man named Salvador. Thank you guys so much. Anyway, the one thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly was one of the couples that we had talked to, we were talking about emotions in the lifestyle. They had told us a story that they were at a resort. Somebody got mad at them, right? Yes. I mean, someone just got mad at them and they had no idea why. They just woke up the next <laughs> morning and someone was mad at them. And all of these emotions came back of going, oh, yeah, yes. I, I remember sort of being like that. Now, uh, full disclosure, I'm kind of an asshole. I mean, well, You're look, not. Well, let me explain. You always play and that I, card. No, no, no. I don't play that card. I am not the nicest person in the world. I think a lot of people would side with me in that. I am not an asshole. No, definitely not. But I do not deal with assholes well. I would second that, yes. Okay. I, I think that half of the world are wonderful people. I really believe that. But I also think half are greedy, selfish, little fucking assholes. <laughs> I really do. And I, unlike you and a lot of other people, I don't have a tolerance for it. So I snap. I break. In fact, in the last Patreon only episode, we heard me losing my shit yeah. on two entitled little fuckers. So <laughs> I just don't deal with it well. And I am one of those people, even in the lifestyle, that allows emotions to seep in rather quickly, where you are able to really just sort of let it roll off your back. Mm -hmm. Don't even notice it. That is an amazing balance to, to be able to have. I have fucked things up before, I'm sure, because I fly off the handle. But you do bring me to a calm place. But that's not helping anybody. Uh. One of the things that I know from doing this a lot is emotions are always high. Let's say you're flirting with them. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of saying, you are with us now in that night. Like you yeah, yeah, can yeah. get to a point where you're like, we've invested time. You are leading us on. And sometimes things go off the rails really quickly. Yeah. They get other plans. Worst case scenario, they meet someone better. And I'm putting that in quotes. But right. You can't see it. Right, right, I'm right. putting the quotes right between my penis. <laughs> so my penis is in quotes. They meet someone better or maybe someone else that goes off the rails. Maybe they the, get drunk and pass out and you don't know. Or you get too drunk and that couple is like, peace you're out. peace out. I'm yeah. out of here. There are a lot of things that can happen, but they all the next day or sometimes later in that night or later in that day can bring you right back to high school. Yes. It's like, I cannot believe <laughs> they fucking broke up with us. Well, you're vulnerable. You're putting yeah. yourself out there. And that's what happens. It's like, even I say like, oh, let's let it roll off your back or whatever. Yeah, you do get vulnerable for that hour, two hours, four hours yeah. that you're putting yourself out there. And it is hard for someone like me, who mm -hmm. is a little more emotional, wears a little more my emotions on my sleeve to not react to that. But take it from me, Swinger Learning, Swinger University, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Swinger Diploma. <laughs> Take it from me. There's really only one best way to handle these drama situations. Uh, this could be anything happens, right? You wake up in the morning and you're like, I cannot believe they did that to us last night. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. We were like totally hitting it off. And then they went with that skeezy couple <laughs> that everybody was making fun of. And do you believe that they fuck them? I saw her sucking his cock, by the way. Gross. Like everybody was like, gross. They cleared out the playroom. Gross. <laughs> and we've all been in a situation and you're like, oh, the gross couple? Yeah, we fucked them. Fuck yeah, we fucked them. The They're actually really sweet. <laughs> really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, and we've all been in that position. We've all woken up in the morning or gone back to our room with that feeling like, what the fuck, yeah. man? Second now, choice. There is, there's a few ways to handle this. Tell me, Richard. I'm going to tell you, Lauren. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Number one, you could be a complete idiot and moron like Richard <laughs> and react and be like, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> is this you. something you do in, in real time or no, is no, this no. after? This actually manifests itself in a very different way. Okay. Usually the way this, this emotional response it manifests itself is by passive aggressive behavior. Oh, shit. So you start to ignore them. You don't look in their direction. When they walk over, you walk away. <laughs> These are all the telltale yes. signs of, I am mad at you. Fuck you. Can't believe you did that to me last night. Now, this, this is a bad way to go. There's a few problems. 
One, the other party may not have any fucking idea that they did anything wrong. Right. They could have been too drunk. They could have no etiquette whatsoever. This is a bad way to go. Yeah, it could be completely oblivious. Right. Then, which is 99% of the time, I'm going to say. Yes. Number two way to handle this situation is to try to prove to them why you are worthy. So these are people that now come on twice as strong and twice as hard the next day. Okay. Right? This is a bad way to go too. This is like, we're going to really show them how good we are. And the bad part about that is you become annoying really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. You be that person that's like, what the fuck happened to them? They were so sweet yesterday. Now they're maniacs. Yeah, now they're all obsessive Yeah, now they're they're clingy. They're coming on twice as strong. You should really hang out with us. And then there's number three, which is the correct way to handle these emotions. Yes. Okay? Okay. And this is what we teach at university. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Just pretend like it never fucking happened. And just treat them the same as you did from day one. Day one. You, you don't we don't recommend going up to them and saying, hey. Depends. I, I mean, if you have to confront the situation, the best way to confront it is to say, hey, can I talk to you alone for a second? We're having a great time. I want you guys to have a great time. But I just want to let you know, I don't know if there were there was some miscommunication going. I just wanted to put it out there that if we did anything, we apologize, but we didn't feel right. Last Would night. you say we're game? Like what? what's no, something no, 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 that no, no, we've no, no, no. done in the past where signals got crossed and we were like, well, I, I think we should say something like. I've said it before. I've said that before. I've yeah, said it like, to, hey. to a few people. Hey, I don't know if we did something to you. I don't know if we said something. Yeah. We rubbed you the wrong way. Whatever it is, we apologize. We just don't want anything to be weird, awkward or weird. And that's how we've approached it. But that's after we've tried to handle it with situation three, which is just hit a reset button. If you can just hit a reset button in this lifestyle, just come back in. How's it going? Don't put pressure on them. Don't come back around with passive aggressive comments. Press reset and make Make sure that you find a way to have fun with your partner. Make sure that you keep on having fun. Because the moment that somebody sees you not having fun because of them brings on a tremendous (laughs) amount of guilt, and then they're going to avoid you at all costs. It's a whole new level, yeah. So the best thing that you can do is just smile through it. And that is the hardest thing for me to do. This is why you can smile through it. I can. Like, yeah, that's good. I, that's fine. Huh? Well, because I never know what people are doing. I never know what goes through their heads or their minds. So I'm just like, well, I don't know. Maybe they could have had A, B, C, D, Z. Who knows? Yeah. And then you just go out and you're like, hey, good to see you guys. Your outfit was cute last night. I'm sorry we didn't end up seeing you later, but we'll be by the pool or whatever. Yeah, you're really good at that. Yeah. And, and sometimes uh, they'll ignore you because they're <laughs> yeah, like, like, well, then that's their problem. Yeah, they'll ignore you because they know they it's they like when a something. dog peed in the back room they're just sort of <laughs> what did you do you're acting suspicious <laughs> oh you peed in the fucking laundry room <laughs> i know that's why you're ignoring me you little bastard <laughs> little bastard and then we put them down we can't have that in the house if they do start ignoring you that is every indication do not approach them do not talk to them anymore write them out of your life but it's very important it's like death keep moving on with your life keep moving on with that party keep enjoying life like if I die, I want you to suffer for five years, but then that's it. Then I want you to move on. <laughs> Just five. That's it. Maybe seven. Oh, five to seven. Shit. And then move on. Okay. Then have a happy life. For sure. But for those first five, I don't want you going outside. Yeah. I don't want any fun. I don't want you to eat. All black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No mirrors. Nothing. <laughs> Just think about me. But then I want you to get on with your life. Sure. You know what I mean? Like nothing ever happened. That is what we can offer as two pro card holding swingers. Um, Did you you follow up with them and ask them what they did? No, I haven't. Actually, I should... See uh, if they ever made any any contact with them, found out what happened. We've all been there. And you know what? Hotels are the worst for it because it's like you're stuck in a five day or a, yeah, and a week long excursion yeah, with these people. Yeah, then you have roommates that you hate all of a sudden. Yeah. And you, I, we've learned to sort of nip that in the bud uh, as quickly as possible. When I see that, that sort of drama monster sort of coming out, again, I don't handle it correctly all the time, <laughs> but I do chop it off very quickly. Like, no, 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 none of that here. Yeah, and no, just no, no. steer left. Yeah. Uh, are, if you're mad at me, tell me why you're mad. Let's get over this. I don't know why you're being weird right now. Yeah. I don't deal well when people start acting weird because 
I match it with aggressive behavior. Like when you start to be passive aggressive, I start to become uber aggressive. (laughs) Just the aggressive. Like I'm going to match your passive. I'm going to fill in where that passive part is. I'm going to fill it in with aggression (laughs) so so it all equals out. Aggressive, aggressive. Yeah. And it's not a good trait, but I, I, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of control over it sometimes, but it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. It doesn't mean that, that somebody else is a bad person. My intentions are usually always in the right place. Like an angel. Um, that again, I don't want to get into (laughs) again, check the logs, making blasphemous analogies. And getting into the Messiah Mm -hmm. and who I am to all of you. Uh, That's it. Uh, I'm running out of time. If anybody has any questions, go ask someone else. Because I feel like we've done enough already. And we need to get more life in. We're always here doing stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have any questions, go to the Telegram group and ask it in the Patreon Telegram group. Because if we don't answer, someone else will. Sometimes we get on random topics like that. It's like having a bunch of kids in a room and you're like, oh, they're all taking care of themselves. All arguing with each other. They're all talking and working things out and asking for advice. And that's all working out. And then I jump in there sometimes Stir and I'm up. like, hey, you, stop biting. Hey, stop anybody want to see paste? Yeah, stop eating paste. Anybody want to see my cock? <laughs> Which is uh, kind of how I was in kindergarten, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so bad. It was the same size then as it is now. Oh, God. That's why you never got picked for dodgeball. Well, that's how close my coach Kevin was. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Religion and pedophilia <laughs> in the same podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Um, I have to go. Cause, okay. Because I'm hungry. Uh, we're going to have leftovers tonight. It's leftover night. Bought by our Patreons. Thank you. All right, it's time to put this thing in a pretty little bow and wrap it up. After that last conversation that we had about awkward situations, about people being dramatic in the lifestyle, we did, in fact, reach out to the couple that did have a problem with the couple while they were at the resort. And we were like, hey, what happened? Yeah. And they said that they they took the advice. My advice. You said your advice, but I'm pretty sure it was mine. But well, you can have it. I uh, want it. They took your advice and they went up to the couple and they were like, hey, we just want to make sure everything's cool. And turns out that the couple were just complete assholes, <laughs> which is what we just said. So then what you do is you keep on, you just march on. It's Boom. like, they're just going to be assholes. But you did the right thing. You cleaned your side of the street. And you can move on now. Yeah. So you did your things. But it just goes to show you, it wasn't you that was crazy. Right. It was the other people that were just crazy. And and that's just the point of, uh, with this lifestyle, as fun as it is, you do have to deal with a boatload of crazy sometimes. Yeah. Really, really quickly. In the time that we recorded the last part, we sold more tickets to the November thing. So we're only down to two? Two or three spots left. Two or three. I don't know. We'll get around the count. Shortly. Uh, so, uh, Antigua, we still don't have dates for next year. We're it's, waiting on that. Yeah. It is going to happen. And then, last but definitely not least, usually we talk about bikini addiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's our favorite bikinis. Yeah, it's the only one. No, I mean, they're not the only well, no, one. There are there are other ones. Bikini Affliction, <laughs> I think I heard of. Now, let me tell you something about Bikini Affliction, and this is true. I heard that in their fabric, they use shards of glass. <laughs> That's true. And I want you to know in Bikini Addiction, that if you use the promo code ROOM77, you can go get 10% off. Their material is made of the leftover fur of caterpillars. That's how it's so soft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they were, and these aren't caterpillars that they breed for the fabric. These are brought up on free range caterpillar farms yes and once they are transformed into beautiful butterflies they collect that fur and that's how they get the softness in that fabric that is one of the reasons bikini addiction is so amazing lauren tell them about bikini addiction how they can get a free one (laughs) you can uh get a free one if you book five nights with us so go to room 77 life.com and you can book your trip with me using my box the new color that they just came out with it's beautiful turquoise i don't know what the rad name that they came up with you can go to bikini addiction.com and check it out and use our promo code ROOM77 for 10% off. That's it, y'all. We want to thank you so much for listening to Two Hot Wives. <laughs> and that about does it for us. For more information, photos, or to contact us, go to room77podcast.com. Thanks for stopping by Room 77. We had a blast. Now get your clothes and get out. Yeah, it's Hectic, yeah, seven, seven, yeah, 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 yeah
seven, seven, seven. Couple of money in my head just to say they did it Can't lie, I'm so paranoid and the window's tinted I own everything around me, you can say it's rented no, no, no. Not talking phone numbers when I'm talking seven digits Earn it by the day, every second minute Used to pay me none, look, now they pay attention Everybody say they drip, but I banded it See them copy all the looks, but I stay switching Pick up the loop, then hit the bank Can't never change, still wrote the change Captain save the pay, this save the day They made me wait, I'm breaking chains Yeah, yeah, tell me feeling Bubbly out the rose, the rose Took a minute, but I got it out the slow way Friends turn to foes, haters tell them go away Rappers make a shiggy dance like a soul train Told them side, no electric It's getting hectic 777 Told them side, no electric It's getting hectic 777 777